Hi, good morning. This is day something of being home. It's all starting to kind of blend together now. Anyway, hopefully everyone is doing well and I'm sure every single person is going to stir crazy and a lot of states in the US are opening up now. So if you are able to go out, just still please be careful, wear a mask, do everything you can to keep yourself and everyone around you safe. So here's what's on the menu today. And I get this question like, do I eat like this all the time? The answer is definitely not. Obviously all the gyms are closed. I'm not able to work out like I used to. I do not eat like this all the time. So here's what I eat. Let me show you my fridge now. So I have a lot of pork belly. I'm cooking a lot of pork belly for the recipe channel. I got some eggs, more pork belly. This is where my stash is. So a ton of meat in here, enough for Korean barbecues, hot pots. I got dumplings. And here I got a snack drawer full of ramen and snacks, turkey. A lot, a lot, a lot. This is really way too many snacks for me. So I'll give away some of this stuff. So if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram. And the day this video launches, I'll do a contest to give away some of those snacks. Also, I think I have a few Grubhub gift cards, so I'll give those away as well. Anyway, I cook for myself most days. And on the days I'm filming videos like this, where we're doing mealtime and story time, those are kind of like my cheat days. So I, I do get to order a lot of food and that's my one massive meal for the day. Today we're eating PF Chang's. I've had PF Chang's once in my life, one time. And this was, I think, my second year of college. I went to Kansas City for the first time, Kansas City, Missouri. We went to P.F. Chang's. And at, th at that point, I, I really didn't know what really good Chinese food tasted like. And I remember having the lettuce wrap in the, and they had like a black bean chicken and I loved it. But it was so expensive. And for most of my life, I was really poor. So that was really the only time I was able to go there. Then I discovered like really good, authentic Chinese food and I've never felt the need to go back. So today, P.F. Chang's, first time in, God, I'm old, like 20 years, 20. Let's see what they got. Ooh, build your graduation meal. Oh my God, I totally forgot it's May and people are graduating right now. So if you're graduating, congratulations. Sorry, it has to be during this crazy times, but good job at making it through school. And it won't always be like this. It will get better. And whether you're going to college or coming into the real world, these are exciting times. So give yourself a pat on the back and uh, get yourself some food. Yeah, it's like the best part about graduating where any occasion, eating. All right, order online, Chang's lettuce wraps. This is what I remember being so good when I got it before. Get some extra lettuce cups too. Ah, Northern style ribs. Dynamite shrimp. Chang spicy chicken, sure. Uh, Kampao chicken. I'll take some dumplings. Crispy honey chicken. <laughs> Pepper steak. Great wall of cake. The great wall of calories too. Yeah, whatever, it's a cheat day. That's it, I'll be honest. I feel way more excited about this than I did with Panda Express. Just saying. Okay, so I ordered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dish. Oh, they didn't give me my dumpling. Oh my God, I'm so sad right now. I don't see the dumpling. There will be an Operation Dumpling Recovery after this, but I got seven dishes, eight if you're counting the little soup, and I got a cake. And before we dig into these lettuce wraps that I haven't had for 20 years, just the biggest shout out and thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. And if you guys don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network, which is something I highly suggest that everyone gets. And Surfshark VPN is something I've been using for over a year now, so I can attest to how good they are. Especially right now when we're all stuck at home, I'm sure like we're binging through so many shows, so many videos on YouTube. A VPN will actually help you get access to different shows that you might not see on Netflix US. I mean, did you know that like different countries have different Netflix content? So if you're in Canada or Australia and you wanna watch what's on Netflix US, you can use a VPN and you'll have access to all that content. Also, I use Surfshark a lot, especially when I'm traveling because I'm accessing different Wi-Fi hotspots all over the world. God, I missed that. Not, not accessing different hotspots around the world, but the traveling part, I'm sure we all do. But it's really vital for all of us to protect our private information. You ever like talk about something with someone, chat about something, all of a sudden that product where 
something related to that shows up on your ads, yeah, that's because something is creeping on you. So basically what Surfshark does is that it encrypts all the data that you're sending through the internet and it prevents other people from seeing it. And Surfshark has hack lock ID, so you actually get an alert if someone tries to break into, let's say your email. And they got a really good deal going on. If you use the link down below in the promo code Mikey Chen, you'll get 85% off the regular price and three months extra for free. And plus Surfshark has a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you try it, you don't like it, get your money back, go buy a couple dumplings. So please check them out. The link is down below. You'll be getting more internet security and you'll be supporting this channel as well. I remember loving these. And I remember how bummed out I was finally getting that bill and realizing how expensive PF chains were and then not having the money to go back was so sad. So this is their famous chicken lettuce wrap. And they used to, I remember back in Kansas City, I don't know if they do this anymore, but they actually make the sauce for you, which I have right here, table side. They would come by with a little cart and they would make the sauce for you. And I thought at the time that was the fanciest thing I've ever seen in an Asian-esque restaurant. And even though I know this is pretty westernized Asian food, I like the taste of this. Mm. This is as good as I remember that. Mm, really not disappointed. They got little vermicelli noodles in here and they got water chestnuts. So it's like stir fried water chestnuts too. And I really like the sauce, which they put a little wasabi in here. That just tastes like crunchy, savory nostalgia. This is the poppin' spicy shrimp. It's like fried shrimp with fried noodles and it's very colorful. This is not bad. It tastes like there's some kind of spicy mayo sauce on this. A lot of flavor, a ton of kick. This is the pepper stick. I have like a love-hate relationship with this dish. I love it because um, it tastes good, you know? It's a lot of meat, and especially when you have this fresh, it's amazing. The reason I kind of hate it a little bit is because this is one of the few dishes my mom allowed me to eat at our buffet. So I ate so much of it. So whenever I'm home for dinner, I'm like, I'm gonna get some stuff on the buffet. She'd tell me, just get some pepper steak because that's like relatively healthy, I guess. So I ate so much of this, I'm kind of sick of it. So I really haven't had it since I left our restaurant. By the way, yeah, me and my own white rice. They charge you 250 extra for a bowl of rice ridiculous make your own rice don't fall for that trap that's like when i went to a fish and chips place in australia and they charged you for ketchup i'm, I'm sorry tomato sauce as they call it and my response to this in that situation was and always will be make your own rice and before you go to fish and chips swing by mcdonald's for some free ketchup this looks good big chunks of beef i see the little bits of pepper that's always a welcoming sight it's good in a sort of a slimy way I know before they cooked this, they put some cornstarch with some flour over the beef before it goes into the oil. I mean, I do like the amount of pepper they use in here and I like the char. You can taste that high heat hitting the wok, but again, a bit slimy. So kind of like eating a peppery ghost. Exactly like eating a peppery ghost. And I know you're gonna ask me, what does a peppery ghost taste like? It tastes like a PF Chains pepper stick. This is their chain special fried chicken, spicy fried chicken. Wouldn't it be funny, and I know this is technically not possible, if the PF and PF Chain actually stood for a private first class chain who served under Colonel Sanders, who served under General So, like an entire chicken military hierarchy. Ah, one could only dream. Well, I guess P.F. Chang is also competing in that baseball league that Panda Express is in. And I think P.F. Chang has a good shot of winning because definitely has more batter. I taste the sweet in this. I really don't taste the spicy. Way too much batter, not enough spice. I mean, you can see the red chilies, but I don't really taste that. And this is, again, a dish that maybe you should not order for delivery. This is one of those things you gotta eat at the restaurant fresh. Oh, wow, look at that. This is a rack of ribs. This is their northern, I think they call it like northern dry rub ribs. One, two, three, four, five pieces of ribs. This actually might be a pretty good deal from P.F. Chang. This is like quarter of a rack of ribs. It looks like they're really nice and meaty with a good roast. Look at that nice char. I mean, it's not fall off the bones tender, but if you get spare ribs at a Chinese restaurant, falling off the bone is really not what they're known for. These are incredibly, so, so amazingly average. God, I hope it tastes better with the sauce. 
I pay for the sauce, not the ribs. These things are bone dry. Mm. Wow. Maybe I should thank PF Chain for this. The gym's been closed and the workout I got on my jaw muscles, best workout I had in a long, long time. Uh, I'm gonna put that on the no list. I had such good luck with the compound chicken from Panda Express that I figure I would try the compound chicken from PF Chain's. You know, I was joking when I said that PF Chain's is trying to start a baseball game to compete against Panda Express, right? No, I'm not sure that's the case. I mean, why would you need so much batter if you're not trying to do that? Why are you putting so much batter in compound chicken, PF? God, I mean, the sauce is great. This one, you can definitely taste the spice. But man, that batter, I mean, again, this might be really good when it's freshly served to your table, but after it's been sitting there and, and kind of getting soggy, yeah, this is definitely not suitable for delivery or takeout. This is the crispy honey chicken. Okay, I now know why there's so much batter in all the chicken at PF Chains. It's literally the same pieces of fried chicken with different sauce. Like this is the honey sauce, we got a spicy and sweet sauce, and we got a compound sauce. They just save time. They use the same chicken, drizzle the different sauces. We got all these completely different dishes. A plus on Commerce PF Chain, but gonna have to flunk your chicken. So overall, I think the food is not bad. Lettuce wrap was great. Pepper steak's pretty good. The chicken, I think if you had it fresh, it's gonna be way better than what I had. The spicy popping shrimp that's on the appetizer menu, that's splendid. That's really, really good. Don't get the ribs though. And I wish I tried their dumplings, but I guess I'll see it tomorrow on the back of a milk carton. So 20 years waiting to try this again. Definitely not everything I hoped for, especially because they don't have that dish anymore that I got all those years ago. I think that dish would have been great. Chicken with black bean sauce, but overall not too shabby of a meal. I gotta eat the chicken because the longer they sit there, the worse it's gonna get. Now I wanna get into my story today. We got so much feedback from you guys saying that you love the urban legends. So I wanted to do a few videos focusing on urban legends because they are my favorite as well because I feel like every urban legend has a grain of truth behind it. No matter how small that grain is, like that bus story I told you guys, you know that was actually in the Beijing newspapers? It was a real event that happened back then. So I told you guys scary stories from Japan, from China, from Florida. Now let's go to South Korea. All right, you guys ready? Got some food in front of you? Dim the lights, cue the scary music. Here we go. And the first urban legend goes like this. So there was a girl, young girl, early 20s and she just has the most busy life okay just work non-stop come home barely enough time to eat and sleep and never had time to find a significant other now i do want to say that this story supposedly happened a long time ago so one night this girl is coming home from a long day at the office and she lives on a tall building on the 14th floor and so she gets into the building and she's so happy because as soon as she gets into the building and pushes the elevator up button the elevator's doors open right away it's small things like that make people happy so she goes into the elevator and she pushes the close button but before the door closes a hand reached in to stop the door and when the elevator door opened up, it revealed a young, handsome gentleman dressed impeccably. He steps into the elevator, they make eye contact, and already the girl is blushing because she sees how handsome he is. And he gets in, their eyes meet, there's a little electricity, he smiles at her, and he asks her, what floor are you going to? She replies ever so shyly, I'm going to the 14th floor. He laughs a little and says, I live on the 13th floor, just one below you. In her mind, her mind is racing like, how come I never seen this handsome guy before in this building? I wonder if he's gonna ask me out. And before you know it, they reach the 13th floor. The young man looks at her, smiles and says, hope to see you again soon and steps out the elevator. And her heart sunk. I think in the back of her mind, she was hoping that he would ask for her number or try to talk to her more. But he steps out of the elevator and starts walking down the hallway. But right before the elevator door closed, all of a sudden, he turns back and looks at her and his expression and his face completely changed into something almost devilish. He turns to her and looks menacingly at her, at the same time reaching into his overcoat and pulls out a massive knife. And he says to her, I'll see you upstairs. Then he started laughing like a maniac and running towards the stairwell. By the time the young lady finally registered in her head what she just saw, the elevator door already closed. At that time, there was no stop button in the elevator. So the only thing she could do was wait for the elevator to go up to the 14th floor, see the door slowly open in the crazy deranged face of the young man as he raised his knife. Huh. You know what? Raised chopsticks are kind of menacing too, you know? Especially for vampires. See, this is why Asians are so smart to use chopsticks all the time. You can eat with it and at the same time defend yourself from blood-sucking demons.
The next story takes us to Thailand. Sorry, since I've been doing these um, eating while telling stories videos, I haven't balanced like how to eat and talk at the same time. Like when I tell stories, I start getting really into the story and I forget to eat. But then I see the food and I want to eat and then oh, it's a delicate balance. Anyway, the next story, it's a really famous urban legend from Thailand. And supposedly this is a real story. So in the 1850s, there was a girl, her name was Nak, and she met this young man she fell in love with. His name was Mak. So they fell in love, got married, and soon after she was pregnant. But unfortunately, Mak was drafted into the army and he had to leave before the birth of his child. So finally, after years, the battle ended and Mak returned home to his village. And when he returned home, the beautiful Nak and their beautiful child went to greet him. As soon as he saw her beautiful face, all the troubles, all those days spent in battle, they all disappeared because he was finally reunited with his family once again. And they lived happily ever after for a little while. Soon Mak started noticing that all of his neighbors, all of their friends, nobody came by anymore. Nobody stopped to say hi, nobody talked to him. And wherever he went, he sees that people try to shy away from him almost like they were terrified of him. And he had no idea why this was until one day, he went out for a walk and when he came home, he saw that his beautiful wife, Nak, was preparing dinner. And he just stood there looking at her through his front door, just thinking how lucky he was. All of a sudden, he saw that Nak dropped a piece of fruit and instinctively, she reached down to pick it up. Then when she reached down to pick up the fruit, her arms extended unnaturally, almost like she was made out of elastic. If you don't know, arms extending is one of the telltale signs in Thailand that someone was a ghost. And Ma couldn't believe what he saw. He didn't know what to think. So he finally went to a neighbor's house and demanded that they tell him what was going on. Why is everyone scared of him? So they told him that after he left, and Nak was giving birth to their child, she died of complications with the child in her stomach. But for some reason, her and the child came back. And anybody who tried to warn him or tell him about the truth of what was happening was always killed in the most brutal way. And that's when Mak realized that since he's been back, there's been so many weird deaths in his village and nobody knew who was responsible. And now he knew. Upon learning this, Mak was terrified. He ran to a nearby temple begging the priest to do something. So the priest came and locked the spirit of Nak into a wristband that to this day is said to be kept by the royals of Thailand to forever keep away Nak's spirit from hurting people. I mean, granted, it, it sucks that your, your dead, vengeful spirit of a wife is, is killing people, but I feel like if, if she wasn't killing people, even if I knew she was a ghost, and she, we could still like live together? Like, can I, can I still touch her? If I could, then why, why would it matter? Like, she came back to life. Like, I mean, that's way better than what happened in Pest Cemetery. At least she wasn't trying to kill him, I guess. The point is, if you ever become a ghost and you want to get back together with your living significant other, just be upfront and, uh, you know, stop killing people. Not too much to ask. All right, one last really short one. So back to South Korea. There's a popular legend of what's called Chungyo Gwaisen. I'm sorry, I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. Uh, what it means is it's virgin ghost. So these are girls who died and they're really ashamed of their marital status. So they can't cross over until they get married. And that's a problem because they're dead. And these ghosts usually have draping long hair, dressed in a white gown, and are extremely vengeful and violent. And one of the urban legends about this ghost is short, but it's so scary. So one night there was a young man, it was a stormy night, really dark he got home really late so he gets home goes into his apartment and gets ready for bed and as soon as he was ready to turn off the lights there was a knock at the door so he looks through the peephole and doesn't see anyone there as soon as he looked away though someone knocked again he looked through the people still nobody there so he says is anyone out there and a voice came from the other side of the door even though he still can't see anyone standing there the voice said close your eyes and count to 100 if you open your eyes before then, someone you know is going to die. And that, of course, really freaked him out. So he closes his eyes and starts counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as he was counting, he's thinking in his head, like, this got to be a prank. This is so stupid. I bet you when I open my eyes, like one of my friends or somebody will be standing there with like a video camera trying to catch my expression. This is so dumb. But he keeps counting 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. The whole time though, he's like, this can't, this is just not real. This has got to be my family or some stupid prank. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 
41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. And finally, when he gets to 47, 48, 49, he couldn't help it anymore. He's like, okay, I'm not going through this. So he opened his eyes. And standing right in front of him was a girl wearing a white dress with hair draped all over her shoulders and her face. But behind the curtain of hair, he could make out what might have been a formerly beautiful face, but all twisted in anger and agony. And that was the last thing he saw before she shrieked and reached her hand towards his chest and pulled out his still beating heart. Because if she wasn't able to have someone's heart when she was alive, she will have it when she's dead. <laughs> that one's crazy. I would have counted to 100. This is just like not walking underneath a ladder or touching an object that people say are cursed. I mean, there's really no harm in trying to avoid something like this, just in case something bad happens because of it. All right, I was so into the stories. I still got so much food. Oh my God, so I forgot about this. This is the Great Wall Cake. Oh. That is a massive, massive cake. Oh my God. And this is probably not the greatest color since we've been talking about telling scary stories all day. But that is a ginormous, ginormous cake. Look at all chocolate chip on the side. Oh my God. That is a good cake. That is something I feel like I really need. Mm. I have not had a good dessert in weeks. Wow. If the Great Wall actually tasted like this, I will eat my way through it. Seriously, moist, so decadent. You know this cake is 2,000 calories. This is definitely PF cheat day for me. All right, guys, also, after the first video I started talking about ghost stories, a lot of you guys have been sending me ghost stories. If you have a really good ghost story that actually happened where something supernatural or even a terrifying experience not related to ghosts, something really creepy, email that story to me, strictlydumpling at gmail.com. And if it's really good, we'll tell it on the show. Wow. Well, all right, guys, as always, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. See you later.